Hello there, my name is Tenorium, and today I am playing Juniper's Knot. So, you know one of those really, really big games that everyone seems to like, but you've never got round to playing? Yeah, Juniper's Knot is that game for me. This has been popular, it's one of the most popular English visual novels, never gotten round to playing it. This is of course by Dischan Media, the people who fucked up dysfunctional <laughs> systems quite badly. So, uh, they got famous through this game, so they must have done something before they made dysfunctional systems. Click to start. I think you press F1 for in-game help. Okay. That does nothing. Okay. <laughs> sure. Okay, so... Do I have to turn off voice acting? No. Awesome. Normally, I would just chill and only start recording from here, but it said press click to start. I was wondering whether I was missing something. Start! Oh, that's a nice little transition. Also, as per usual, with any sort of old game, for whatever bizarre reason, the video might seem stretched. That's because I've had to stretch it because the window's so fucking small. Like 1024 by 576? Like, Christ. Right. Is there anything out of the ordinary here. No, that's all easy. What is this art? It's slowly panning across like I remember it did in Dysfunctional Systems. Albeit this one quicker than that one. Very odd, very little detail to any of this. It's blurry. Eh, I don't know. Much of these stone walls and floors have weathered into dirt and dust, revealing the foundation. Much of the ceiling too has crumbled to the ground, layering and flexing bits. Yeah, let's... um. Let's just turn that up. <laughs> I read too quickly. I've said before, I'm always about four or five words from where I'm reading ahead. Bef below me now is such tired soil. Tired, tired soil. Why do we feel sorry for the soil? Mm, pah. There isn't much to do here but burn dead leaves and wait. Watch the smoke rise, curl up fresh and tickle the inside of your nose. Dull as bones it is. But what can I do? I'm stuck. Some might say cursed, I'd rather say bound. Pretty sure both of those go in hand, in hand, really. I don't like to think very much about it. <laughs> Apparently not. <laughs> that was real cut off, wasn't it? I don't really like to think much about this, therefore I'm not going to. Next scene. I kneel to the small fire I've started, taking up a few embers and loam into my palm. It's this glow that stirs me and reminds me that my heart is still beating. I bring the scorched earth close to my face and shut my eyes and breathe it in. I taste it and spit. Why would you taste that? That sounds something horrible. Ugh, it's barren. I'm probably going to wait here forever. What? What the fuck am I? A emo -y sort of demon? I'm struggling here. The horns are a bit of a put-off. As are the ears. They're normally elven. Again, the art, very blurry. Very little detail going into it. Like, up here, you can see the very sort of vague light out there. Uh, where it's supposed to be bricks here, v or even wood, it's hard to tell. <laughs> kind of illustrates my point, actually. <laughs> very odd. This is very nice, but it's just how odd and blurry the detail is. What? There's an unnatural rustling not too far off west? West. Aye. What is it? Who? Another here? Okay, so I'm playing as this blue-haired demon elven emo thing. My eyes sharpen and my ears perk up. I feel my heart thumping into my throat. Should I be forward? Give a call? Would that work? No, that's a terrible idea. Cry out, plead, help, help, damsel, a full sort of lie, would that work? No, go still. Listen, just listen. Those are firm footsteps. <laughs> now, I don't know about you, but I only see dirt on the ground. At least, yeah, it's uneven. So that's a dirt ground. What on earth are they stepping on which is making that sound? Whatever it is, it's right busy about here. It's right busy about... <laughs> Noise is tumbling, rough, and from old doorways, chests wine open, shops and homes are explored. 
scavenger then? Someone found this place? That's, hmm. Hearing this sounds is just odd. It shouldn't be odd, but it is strange. I should remember such sounds. How long have I been alone? Oh, the noise is getting closer. Is it? I imagining this. Do I not speak English? There's several things being said. We're only five minutes into the fucking game that seem bad English. I imagining this. <sighs> no, no, surely it, it's surely in the manor. Now poking around the kitchen and the lounge. I decide on the chance that it will find its way to the ballroom to stand. I take a good posture and await this new company. And to my surprise, it, he, shows up at the door within the next minute. A boy, a man? What kind of thing is this again? He's carrying a pack and a bottle on his waist. Maybe he's a traveller, then. Why is May and B got space in but Holy shit! Really? <laughs> Come on, we're only six minutes into the game. You're going to bring out spelling mistakes that early? Oh, dear. Doesn't look like he's noticed me yet. He's just wandered in, stare adrift. If I'm looking at the door, why is he coming walking backwards? How is he not... Oh, there we are. After a few steps, I catch his eye. He moves a little closer to look me in the face and then sees more to see my feet. He stops there. He's staring now and doing nothing more. Come here. As if realising something. Something. A space in... <laughs> Whatever. He stiffens. His heart beats loud in the air. I need your help, so come on, come here. He doesn't bend. What is he up to? What does he think this is? I'm as confused as the guy is. I speak again, this time with a little bite. The hell are you waiting for, tit? Oh, oh, have I been rude? Have I been rude? Oh, well, you are cordially invited to move your dumb legs. For the first conversational words I've spoken in centuries, they could have been worse. He shakes with fear and stands back. Uh, fiend? Slow, are you? What does it matter? What are you pissing your trousers for? Get over here. No way! Y you'll eat my soul! Oh, what? A smile cracks along my face. <laughs> your soul! Oh my, oh my, oh my, oh my! When was it last that I laughed like this? I guess being centuries alone would make you just an absolute freak. I grin. I grin so brightly watching, chuckling while he shrinks, shrinks back a little and a little more. Eh, 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 now, person? Person, you're just perfect. A jester, won't you lend an ear? A four, I eat your soul. <laughs> At my laughter, he glares, stealing himself. He answers me. You're not catching me, demon. Got that? I've read the stories. I'm tired, but I ain't stupid. You're also like 12. What is someone like you doing exploring a place like this? Does your mother know? Are you going to be back in time for dinner is the important question. Am I that famous? That mercy, I left a mark. You know what I mean. Hell, I really don't. Fiends, devils, demons, all here. I know how it is. And how is it? You're all foul and you try to trick people. Trick you? Trick? <laughs> oh. Oh, I really just can't believe it. What's happened in the years I've been gone? And what if I'm not trying to trick you, person? What if I just want to hear you? Just want to hear me? The hell? Like, what's it you've read, lad? Do tell. I'd love to hear a story. I'm a little bored. I think I'll just leave. You turn tail on a bloodthirsty, wicked fiend? Look, I know something dirty when I see it. You ain't fooling no one. <laughs> He's so precious. I laugh a lot. Like... You never understand just how unnatural laughing is when written into games when you have to actually read it aloud. It's horribly out of place. All right, all right, I'll tell you what, I'll tell you. I, like all of us fiends, devils, demons, am plainly trying to win your extravagant soul through my dastardly wit. Honest and true, I'm a rook. But please, please, at least, at the least, tell me of what you've read. Why the hell do you want to listen to me so much? Because I'm bored in your voice. Ah, oh, your voice, I swoon. Bah, horse feathers. I really do want to listen. Would you be so kind? Ah, oh, he's genuinely considerate. 
such a delight. I do want to hear him. In the meantime, I look over him a little more finely. He's got a fair face, but through the fabric of his shirt I can see that he's muscled. A surprise, even the soldier boy seems a bit lean back in the days I rode at Marley. I wonder what it is he does. He smells like an animal in the most pleasant way that can be said, it's quite good. That will probably be the clothes he's wearing. They're not like threaded through pubes of another demon or something like your cut. It's probably not that. Also, he has the faintest scent of watercress about him mingled with black oil. What a peculiar lad. Ha! Hmm. I'd really better not stick around. I guess I can tell you some things though? Yeah, I guess I can tell you. As long as you stay put, you hear? What's keeping me from you is more powerful than I care to challenge, person. Yeah, right, whatever. Here's a story, one from a book I read a lot when I was little. <sighs> oh, pardon, pardon. I find it very hard to think of you of any littler. <laughs> I'm oddly outgoing for... You'd think you'd be a little nervous after speaking to someone for the first time in years. Quiet! There was a cobbler in Whiteacre who had nothing to eat. He was poorer than dirt and he didn't have a girl and it made it real sore. He didn't have a girl? A dame, a sweetheart, he didn't have a wife. Ah, continue. What else do you think he meant? While he was walking down an alley, he met this man. He had on a dark cloak with a hood that covered his eyes and the cobbler couldn't make heads or tails of it. He stopped and asked the cloaked man if he'd like to walk his shoes worked on. If he'd like his shoes worked on. Right, okay, that now makes sense. The? That's stupid, why would he do that? Because he needed all the work he could get? Well, he should have gone around ruining shoes if what he needed was work. The cloaked man said he wasn't wearing shoes, but he could use a new pair. But obviously the cobbler's a cobbler, so he doesn't make shoes, he tells him that. And the cloaked man says, actually, I could really use some new shoes. The cobbler looks at him weird and says if says he can get them if the guy's sick. And the cloaked man says, why would you do that? I'd do something for you then. And the cobbler says, like what? And the cloaked man says, perhaps anything. Where are we going with this? Are we going into the realms of odd sex? That's the only way I see this going. There's no other way. There might be another way. He leans forward darkly as he says this. I smirk. I smirk. I smirk at his action. Now, I know what you're thinking. I've heard this one before and I know how it goes. Well, you don't. Because the cobbler says perhaps not. And he walks away. How exciting. But here's the thing. When he's walking, he notices the alley's longer than usual. He doesn't think about it, though. Thinks he's tired, just tired from work, and keeps walking. But while he's walking, he sees another man in a cloak. He stops and asks if the man could use his shoes getting worked on, and the cloaked man says he doesn't have any shoes. The cobbler stops and looks at him and says he'd better get moving. The cloaked man says he could really use some new shoes. And while he's moving, you know, I nod. He keeps running into this man in a cloak and he can't find the end of the alley. Actually, every time it takes longer and longer till he sees the man in the cloak. On the eighth time he runs into the man, he stops and asks what's the game. And the cloaked man looks at him with yellow eyes, says he could really use some new shoes. For what, the cobbler says. I don't know, the cloaked man says, perhaps anything. What do you want? The cobbler knows exactly what he wants, but fiends have yellow eyes and he knows of fiends. Tut nonsense, I actually sighed hearing that. So what you're telling me, if this story is anything good to adhere to, is that I might have already trapped you. Dunno. I don't think you did. Why not? He shrugs. I don't think you did. Hmm. I really must say, your manner of storytelling is queer. What? It's strange. Oh. I don't know. It's just very strange to my ears. I guess. How's your story end? The cobbler gets desperate and makes a pact with the fiend to get new shoes by the next day. The fiend will give him the gold for him to do that. The f so the fiend gives him the gold, but he doesn't make it. The fiend traps him in the alley so he can't leave. His soul is taken and he's damned. The fiend eats his soul and leaves the alley for a farm. A farm? Yeah, I know. I snort. That's comedy. I think it's supposed to mean something, but eh. Point is, don't get caught up with fiends no matter what. You're getting caught up with a fiend right now. Well, you don't feel right. I what? He shakes his head. Nothing. I look at him and try to figure him out. Figure out his opinions and his story. In the time he's told it, he seems to have taken another idea of me. I'm not sure why that is either. I appreciate you telling me that story. 
don't mention it. Do you ever feel like you've just wasted 15 minutes of your life? This is the second most popular original English language visual novel on VNDB. It must do something right, surely. Uh, oh well, we'll find out in part two.